Welcome to Sage Advice, a web series where we interview the wise and wonderful who have developed high levels of skills and expertise in their chosen fields. Here at Sage Advice, we believe that each one teaches one. Today, I have the privilege of sitting down virtually with two very special guests, Barry Heyman and Mark Wynn. Barry Heyman has been practicing entertainment, intellectual property, and new media law for over 15 years and has founded his own practice, Heyman Law. Within this practice, he represents almost every niche profession in the music industry. Not to mention, Barry has done music programming for television, worked for recording companies, consulted clients such as MTV, and co-produced his own TV show. Barry is widely regarded as a knowledge leader and regularly speaks on panels at the music industry conferences. Mark Wynn is the founder of Planet LA Records, which aligns artists and brands through events, digital media, and creative campaigns. Uh, Planet LA has produced events during Grammy Week, the SXSW Music and Interactive Conferences, Gibson Showrooms, and Nationwide, and many other activations. Uh, for over a decade, Mark was an international trade advisor to global law firms and the World Trade Organization based in Geneva, Switzerland. So thank you guys so, so much for sitting down with me today. Uh, I've been dying to ask you guys questions about your Grammy experience and just overall hear what you have to say. So I guess jumping into it, uh, please tell me an overview of your Grammy experience and what brought you to this point. Um, should I start or Barry? Mark, you start. Okay, sure. Yeah, well, yeah, thanks again for having us. And, and it's great to be uh, part of the Flobel um, advisory group. And that thanks to Barry and Dan and, and the whole team. Um, that's kind of how I got involved, um, 10 years in the music space, which is kind of where I pivoted. Uh, it's interesting. You mentioned my background as an international trade advisor. So I still kind of straddle both air fields of international trade music and marketing. And so with the uh, Grammys, I've been a member for over 10 years and for about seven or eight years now. Um, and so it was good to see it back live um, and this year um, it was relocated um, at the start of this month in April in Las Vegas uh, where usually it's in LA or sometimes in New York like for example the 60th anniversary was in New York and Barry and I actually were there too <laughs> for for the 60th uh, at Madison Square Garden and then uh, this was the 64th so it's just great to sort of reconnect with people in person and to see the, um, the pre-telecast, which is over 60 awards uh, prior to the live broadcast on CBS. And then just, you know, it was uh, overall a, you know, great time to sort of reconnect and celebrate music. Nice. So you want me to join, jump in now? Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, so thank you also for having me um, be a part of this. So um, I first went to the Grammys uh, maybe 15 plus years ago. Uh, it was my first time. It was in New York City. It was uh, cold and slushy. And uh, then they like brought it out to L.A. where it usually is. And I was, you know, being a New Yorker, thought, well, that's not fair. And then I went to LA during the same period of time and the weather was perfect. And I was like, oh, now I see why it's in LA. Um, it's just a very much more comfortable uh, environment typically to experience the Grammys. Um, and this one, as Mark mentioned, being the, for, I guess, the most unique in that it was, uh, it was not only just delayed, but it was also moved to Las Vegas. I hadn't been there in many, many years. Um, and uh, and then, you know, just reconnecting, as Mark mentioned, uh, not only with the music community uh, or the, you know, uh, but also just people in general and it's very lively atmosphere in Las Vegas. So that really helped jumpstart the whole, uh, you know, occasion uh, just to see how much energy was just there in, in Las Vegas. And uh, there's a lot of entertainment there, generally speaking. So. I got to see uh, Silk Sonic perform a full concert the night before. And just really, I, I just felt like a very musical weekend with 
top-notch performances uh, before the Grammys. Uh, I went to some other events where a lot of the Grammy performers, nominees were playing and people, uh, band members associated with them. And uh, a lot of my friends and musicians' friends were performing out there. And for me, it was just a ton of fun. Um, and to, to experience it also with Mark um, on, on the, not only uh, just, we, Mark helped to organize uh, networking events as well to bring people together before and post Grammy, uh, you know, event. And that was just a lot of fun to, to collaborate with Mark on that. And, uh, you know, so I look forward to other, to future ones as well. You know, so that was my overall ex feeling and experience. Yeah, absolutely. Especially everything now kind of opening back up again slowly and safely, like being having that interpersonal connection physically is so important. So, and Barry, you had mentioned the livelihood and kind of the energy. What was the process of getting ready for the events like and the feeling of going and just the general atmosphere? Um, well, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, Mark and I uh, coordinated. Uh, he actually helped with some. Uh, fashion attire and advice um, and was helped to help get me uh, looking sparkly and, um, and fresh. And uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, there was a lot of camaraderie, you know, amongst us. Uh, and Mark has a couple of other uh, friends that joined us. So, and they were just uh, delightful to be with and a lot of fun. And so I was just uh, kind of felt like well taken care of with my uh, friends, new friends and, um, it was just fun to, uh, as we even left the hotel, we were just kind of getting our, our you know, attire together. And we ran into uh, a, a beautiful woman who was uh, decked out and seemed like she was going somewhere special and turned out to be a performer. Uh, that was actually, she opened the Grammys. It was she with the Carter family, was it? Yeah, yeah she opened the, yeah, literally she was running to <laughs> kind of open the telegram the pre-telecast, so it was great. And we ran into her right in the elevator of all places. So, no yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's, a, that's the beauty of uh, being at these things in person too. You just never know who you're gonna run into. And, you know, it's just a lot of fun, you know, that, that aspect of things. Um, so that was my, my kind of thoughts about getting ready and, you know, kind of heading out there. It was perfect weather, uh, it was just great. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, it was a, a nice uh, little group. So this year, I, as a member, I was able to get two additional uh, passes. So it was great to have Barry join um, my friend Kevin Winston, who runs Digital LA. And it's like a digital media group. And then my partner, Frank, uh, who lives in the New York area, came out for it. So uh, so a couple of us decided to get tuxes. And that was kind of a process is like, can we fit in our usual sizes? Because we haven't worn tuxes in a couple of years. So, so mm -hmm. that was kind of fun to like, you know, dress up again, because I'm sure the last couple of years, you know, a lot of, you know, events like this, the Grammys is a black tie type of event, um, even though you don't have to wear tux, but some of us decided, <laughs> you know, and, but yeah, all of us, I think, uh, had fun getting ready and and we did a after party uh right after the grammys because the official grammy after party uh got canceled this year and so we thought you know it'd be nice to just have some folks over so we got a a suite with the beautiful balcony overlooking the las vegas trip at the cosmopolitan hotel and then we just invited friends we knew and people we just met <laughs> during the weekend who were there and, and a number of them actually did go to celebrate after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, and why not whip out the tux, right? Might sure. as well, since we've been in pajamas for the last couple of years. Yeah. <laughs> why <Exactly>. not? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what is your favorite award slash category at the Grammys? Um, I'd say for mine, the one I vote in every year consistently is the world music category. Um, so, you know, for, for me, it's like being a very global person. I was born in Vietnam. I lived in Europe and spent a lot of time overseas. Uh, music to me is global. So there should be many global <laughs> music categories. 
Um, and there are, you know, there's like Latin and other ca uh, categories, but world music to me has always been special given the variety of artists uh, nominated and the winners have come from across the world from, you know, from India, Nigeria, uh, all, all around the Latin America, of course. Uh, uh, so yeah, so I've, so I, this year I knew two people uh, who were in the top five <laughs> in that category. Uh, one from originally a Hawaiian artist doing global music and another that's Daniel Ho and then another uh, friend, uh, Rocky Dawuni, Dawuni, who does reggae music from Ghana. So it was exciting to see two friends in that category. Oh, incredible. Barry and you? Very cool. Um, that's, a, that's a really great one, Mark. Uh, you know, myself, I have personal interest in, in the world. I love to explore different sounds and instruments. Uh, and I love it, especially as it combines with electronic music. Uh, and that's my sweet spot in terms of what I like to listen to, and what I like to DJ, I DJ uh, for fun. Um, and but so with that in mind, I my little the one that really kind of jumped to mind to me uh, or came to mind was uh, the electronic music, the dance music category for like best album, best uh, you know record. Um, I grew up on on dance music, um, and so to see it get recognized at the Grammys, um, you know, it's just kind of like that's my roots. Uh, you know, I guess Mark kind of roots are you know, more international based. I see, I guess, it's, I guess the common theme there. So it's really where I kind of, where I come from, you know, with dance music. Um, and then album of the year, you know, is always interesting because I feel like there's so many records out there and there's always, uh, a, you know, you just can't really dive into them. And so, you know, I kind of look to those to kind of get a bit of a barometer of where we're at. Uh, at least from, you know, the Grammy perspective. Um, and I usually take some more time to focus on, you know, who's nominated and, and who wins those uh, awards. And, you know, this year I was uh, particularly happy because the winner, John Batiste, and his executive producer, uh, Ryan Lynn, uh, I know personally and have uh, helped him out here and there with, with some things. And, uh, so it's just nice, you know, I've known John for over 10 years to just see him up there and win. And, and I think that was a big surprise. And um, especially given, you know, I don't think he's as popular, mainstream popular uh, as the other ones, but it was just nice to see him get recognized. Yeah. Absolutely. So mm -hmm. I kind of on the opposite end of the spectrum, what do you guys think was the biggest snub of the night? Um. You know, it's uh, speaking of popular music, sometimes we think some of the most popular artists, you know, whether it's uh, Justin Bieber or Kanye or, or whoever, or Beyonce, <laughs> although she's won <laughs> record numbers of Grammys, uh, mm -hmm. might get snubbed. Um, but I thought Justin Bieber had some really good music last year and, you know, Peaches was a, such a cool song, but he seems to often get snubbed in some of those big categories like song or record of the year. So even though he performed that song actually at the Grammys, uh, he didn't win for song of the year. So I don't know. It's a, I think the Grammy voters uh, have been a, a lot more diverse and, and, and that shows in recognizing artists like John Baptiste, who are fantastic uh, musically, but they may not be as popular in sort of like uh, streams or record sales. So it, it's, I think it's a, a very positive trend you know, that the Grammys are recognizing, you know, a really talented artist, not only commercially successful, but maybe sometimes we think the best-selling artists are usually the ones likely to win, but that shows it's not always the case. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I definitely thought Justin Bieber's, you know, Mark, as you mentioned, the Peaches song was one that came to mind and also BTS, Butter, mm -hmm. I thought would win. I yeah. just thought their performance, you know, I thought they, you know, they're speaking of international and, you mm -hmm. know, the U.S. usually, you know, always uh, the biggest artist in the world, you know, in our U.S. kind of perspective is usually English speaking uh, mm -hmm. so, uh, artists. Or, and so to see an artist really, you know, a K-pop artist really break through for many years at this point, 
but then to you know write and sing a song in English and to really have that be a hit song and a good song I thought and they performed at the Grammys and I just thought like I just thought it was um, they would win it the category you know that you know, for that song at least and um, and I was a bit surprised that BTS didn't win. Yeah, you know, yeah, no, definitely a good point about BTS. And actually, now that I remember, the the artist uh, who I thought was the biggest snub of their career, <laughs> perhaps, was ABBA got their first Grammy nomination this year because um, they lo- released that surprise album. So I still have faith in you was nominated for Song of the Year. So um, so that would have been quite special as a legacy of their amazing career. Um, to win, but uh, but obviously they didn't that night. So I think that's kind of a snub, <laughs> you know, like when you have an artist like ABBA finally nominated and they still didn't win. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, kind of to segue, while I didn't include it in your initial introduction, you guys are both professors and distinguished leaders in the industry. What is some advice you would give to young entrepreneurs and students trying to break into this space as vast as it is? Um, yeah, I'll just start this one. Uh, I, you know, uh, yes, I'm a professor now. I've been a student for undergraduate for college um, and then also for law school. One of the biggest, uh, more important, I thought, um, opportunities I did was to intern, to just try to, while you're in school, to connect, if you can, with companies, with people, professionals that can just give you advice, um, that will just potentially offer you an internship, that potentially... And so I'm not sure if you can still hear me, but uh, is it, did it go out or at all? It's a Can little bit. Yeah, it froze a little bit when you were talking about it. Yeah, I'm seeing a little freezing on my end. I was just saying just, you know, potential internships that lead to full-time jobs. Uh, that happened in my career, and it was really uh, helpful. And then also uh, things that uh, Mark and I do and I think others should do, especially up-and-coming professionals or interested professionals, is attend conferences, be participate at conferences, festivals, uh, and just get involved, even if you can't afford necessarily their student, sometimes they have student pricing, sometimes they even have applications to attend. Um, if there's a, you know, monetary considerations, you can write, you know, write to them sometimes. Um, or if you, worst case scenario, you could potentially attend some conferences that don't necessarily require a pass to be, feel like you're involved, um, like South by Southwest, uh, which Mark, uh, you know, mentioned earlier uh and uh you know the grammys you can potentially uh participate by applying to the recording academy you might not be a voting member but you can be a non-voting member if you're in college there's grammy u uh which is for university and that's in, you know you can potentially become uh you know get involved through the college and if there's not a grammy u association uh uh, you know, at the college, you can potentially become, reach out to them directly and become that student representative at the college. So, you know, it's really like anything else, just putting your, you know, your best foot forward and, and just being proactive. That's my thoughts. Yeah, absolutely, Mark. Yo, yeah, no, um, definitely agree with all of what Barry shared, uh, really valuable advice. Um, so I, I don't teach music uh, per se, but I uh, teach, um, international marketing, business ethics, so more on the business uh, perspective of, of uh, which is super helpful because, you know, many students might be interested in um, work or projects that involve creativity or music or entertainment. Um, and then I have uh, usually in the spring about 10 interns, and that's the case now. We're wrapping up our program in May, as many of them finish their school year and semester. Um, but the advice I tend to give my interns or students in general is just to not only network, which is fantastic, especially as things are reopening and there are lots of opportunities, uh, but through that networking, you know, find ways to collaborate um, and, and don't always ask, you know, and say, 
uh, I wanted to do this or that or, you know, but just be very open to contributing however they can in these uh, opportunities where they can collaborate, whether they're artists themselves or whether they're in marketing or supporting, um, if, whether in, they're in design or, you know, software or video or editing. Uh, there's so many opportunities uh, because in this industry, it's really built on collaboration um, and helping to create that um, interesting content that could then find its audience. Um, and so through collaboration, I think, uh, you know, a lot of young uh, um, students and, uh, and people entering the industry can sort of learn, can grow into whatever that role is. Because I think a lot of us, even in my case, I didn't think I would have a music label. I didn't think I would be, you know, involved in the space as much as I have. Um, but it just evolved over time through collaboration and and um, following your passion and then pivoting and kind of, uh, yeah, being adaptable, especially after the pandemic. I think we've had become even more adaptable and pivot even more. So, so, I, so that would be the advice I'd give to sort of um, young people in this industry or kind of uh, trying to build a career in this space. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Well, thank you guys so, so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to sit down with me today and let me pick your brain about this incredible experience. I hope to see, talk to you again, maybe next year if you guys attend again. Um, and I'll give you kind of this space for a second. Is there any projects or uh, Instagrams that you guys want to shout out? Anything that you want to shed light to? Um, uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> Barry, do you want to go first? Uh, well, um, if anyone's interested in connecting, uh, you know, I have my own law practice uh, and uh, I love to connect with other uh talent as well as uh, entrepreneurs, you know, so anyone that's interested, they're welcome to contact us or myself at Heyman Law is the, uh, the handle, H-E-Y-M-A-N uh, Law, Heyman Law. And I think that's across, uh, what, at Facebook, at least Instagram and Twitter, uh, mostly Instagram and, and Facebook. Um, and through there, they can reach out um, or heylaw.com, H-E-Y-L-A-W.com. Um, in terms of uh, other upcoming events, there's really a thing. I know there's uh, Music Biz Weeks happening in Nashville. I'm not sure if you're going uh, more to that, but uh, you know, I'm uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward. I see, like I, you know, you mentioned I'm an adjunct professor, so that's a lawyer and keeps me busy. So just looking to catch a breather, you know, and uh, try to take some time off, enjoy, uh, you know, see, you know, re just see what's going out there, you know, going on out there, live shows and. Uh, just uh, touch base with a lot of my colleagues, friends, physicians. Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, on our end, it's been a busy spring. It feels like not much happened in the last two years, except digitally. <laughs> and then suddenly this year, it's just things started really happening, you know, including during Grammy week uh, and South by Southwest, uh, all returning in a big way. <clears throat> but uh, I've been here in the Coachella Valley last weekend, this weekend, to support uh, some events uh, and parties that have been returning. And yesterday we supported an Earth Day party here that fo was focused on saving the salt and sea. So you can find all about that at our Instagram or Facebook app, Planet LA Records. Um, coming up, uh, I'll be in New York <laughs> soon in a couple weeks to support our, our friend Nira, who is also an advisor, right, if I recall. Nira Paliwoda, um, who was in the music space, um, and now she's uh, in a number of different areas, including the food space. And she, she has an event, her 10th anniversary um, vegetarian food festival, returning to uh, Metropolitan Hall in Chelsea, May 21st, 22nd. Um, so so help, we're helping her with that. Um, and then in June, we're returning to the NAM show, the, Music Manufacturers Conference, which normally is in January, but that got pushed to the first weekend of June. So we uh, are there to support some of our brand partners who are exhibiting there at, in Anaheim. And then Barry and I uh, will be in Hawaii in June um, 
for a special celebration and event on June 24th, uh, which is the first live event we've done with our partners at Whole Planet Foundation, which is a nonprofit of Whole Foods Market. Um, so that'll be a celebration uh, highlighting Hawaiian music and culture and their programs in Polynesia. And so we'll have a special event there uh, in Hawaii. So it'll be music, celebration, and, and probably some vacation time too, right, Barry? <laughs> yeah, definitely some vacation. Yeah, well-deserved, well-deserved vacation time for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.